enough is enough. Yeah. I need to improve. I should be the best version of myself. All this cry baby. Well, you shouldn't fat shame and you, you, everybody's different. It's like, no, you know, when you look in the mirror, how you feel. Bro, Quit lying to people, different. Here's know? what's different. I work my ass off and you eat cupcakes. That's how we're right. different, right? Right, right? The truth is the paramount to progress, not getting wrapped up in this politically, politically correct BS, social movement BS. We all know that's BS, bro. You could sit here and say, oh, fat people are beautiful. And you could say all this stuff. And that might, might, maybe you're into that. That's fine. The truth of the matter is, it's not healthy at the very least. This video is brought to you by TatumStore.com. TatumStore.com, brand new, off the press, available for pre-order. It'll be available next Friday, but you can get 22% off if you order it in pre-order. After pre-order, there'll be no discounts and there's a limited supply. So if you want this shirt right now, 22% off, put in the discount code LA22. LA22, pre-order this shirt. Now we got the, the women's crop and then we also have the unisex t-shirts like the one I'm wearing right now. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications. Anytime go live, make a video, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Let's get into this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my friend is with me today. I feel like every single person that follows me, that watch my social media, if you don't know who Andy Frisella is, you, I don't know, you're living under a rock or, or what you're doing with your life, but you need to know who Andy Frisella is, the founder and CEO of First Form. The code is products in the game. The code, we, we got like eight or nine of y'all's uh, protein shakes in there. The cookie and cream is one of my favorite. The cinnamon bun or whatever. My wife loves that one. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, you, you need to get to know Andy because he's one of the most inspiring people that I've ever met. No nonsense type of person. Uh, I went to his facility out there in Missouri and to the T, neat, clean, specked out, all the things that you would think a leader would do and how to manage people is exceptional. So, Andy, uh, welcome to the Tatum show. Hey, I got so many things to talk about with you, man. Um, one thing is I want to start from the beginning. You know, how did you get started? If anybody look you up, they'll know what you, they'll see what your net worth is. They'll see how, how big first form is. You got the energy drink that just came out. All of the great things that you do, what you do with Ed Milet in the, in the conference that you guys do 75 hard, they can see all that. How did you start, man? How did you go from a to B? You know, uh, it was humble, man. Um, when I grew up, I always had an entrepreneurial spirit. You know, I was the, the kid that was trying to sell lemonade or trying to sell baseball cards or, or do whatever I could to get by. And so, like, I was never interested in school. I wasn't like a good student. I didn't do very well. Uh, I usually looked at my teachers and thought, man, you guys are dumb af okay and uh that's that, i'm gonna keep it clean because i'm gonna respect your show but <laughs> we'll we'll blur it out if you yeah. get crazy man. but uh you know like i just never i just never felt uh like a normal person in terms of that regard and i i struggled and i struggled my whole childhood i struggled all through high school i was a good athlete um i, I was able to make my way through school on sports and um you know when i got out of high school I didn't really know what I wanted to do, uh, but I knew what I didn't want to do. And what I didn't want to do was go to college. And what I didn't want to do is go learn a bunch of more useless stuff that I was never going to use and I wasn't interested in. And so uh, my buddy, Chris, who's my business partner now, um, he, he went and played football at Missouri State and we had a football scholarship. And we uh, we started talking and we're like, man, he, he wasn't really feeling college football because, as you know, college football becomes a job. It's not – you know, it's not the love of the game like it is when you're playing high school and youth. And um, he's like, man, I just kind of want to get started in some sort of business. And I agreed. So we we uh, we actually thought about starting a tanning salon and we we're like, we're going to start some tanning salons. And the reason we thought that was because we saw a guy that we knew who was doing real good with tanning. And we thought, you know, hey, if he can do it, we can do it. Uh, but the problem was we didn't have any money and each tanning bed was like 30 grand and nobody was going to loan, you know, two 17, 18 year old kids uh, money. So that was out the window. So uh, we both worked a job where we painted the stripes on parking lots and um, we came up with another idea. And the, the, the second idea was we were going to open a, a, a brick and mortar retail sports nutrition supplement store. And uh, 
we used the $12,000 that we had. Um, that, that was to cover the rent because we were so young, we didn't have any credit. Uh, nobody would lease to us. Nobody would rent to us. So we had to pay our rent up front and our rent was a thousand dollars a month. So that took our $12,000. So now we had this empty space with, with no product. And the way we were able to fill the space with product was we went on campus you know, and, and back in those days, you could go on campus and fill out a, a credit card application. They give you a free shirt. And there was tables set up all over campus back then. And I, I don't know if they do that anymore. I don't think they're allowed to, but, uh, we went and filled out all of them and we got all these different credit cards. Um, and we were at, you know, five, six, $700 limits at a time, beginner credit cards. And then we financed the build out of the store. And then the, uh, the initial product, uh, order, which was $10,000 on those credit cards. And that's how we got into business. And so, um, you know, we, our friends helped us build the first store out. We, we, we went to Home Depot. We didn't have a contractor. Uh, if you go to the first store back in Springfield, Missouri, it's still there. Uh, it's at 1709 South Campbell, Springfield, Missouri, 65807. If you want to go check it out, it's 864-6799 is the phone number. And I still remember it because I answered the <laughs> phone there for a long time. Uh, if you go check it out, you'll see the counters and all the stuff that we actually built. Like me and Chris and another buddy of ours, Mark, built those the shelves and the wall and did the build out. And then we ordered $10,000 worth of product and we thought we were going to be rich. Uh, and, and we were wrong. Um, the first day that we, we opened, we sold uh, $7 worth of product. Uh, the second day, we sold $0. The third day, we sold $23. It took us eight months to have a day over $200. We lived in the back of that store on an old mattress that we got because our strip center uh, was connected to a Salvation Army store, which is similar to like Goodwill store. And we bought a mattress out of there. We put it in the back and him and I both slept on it for a long time. Uh, we went back and forth between, and, and dude, he's not small and I'm not small either. So it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't the greatest thing. Um, and uh, yeah, man. And that's how we got started. You know, we just got started and, and uh, we, I, we didn't have any money to market. We didn't have any money for ads. There was no social media. There was no Instagram, Facebook. There was no internet at, at there was, there was internet, but it was like basically email and nobody really knew how to use it for business. And dude, I spent most of my days uh, walking up and down Springfield, Missouri, talking to walk like cold calling into businesses saying, hey, I'm Andy. We have this store down the road. This is what we do. And, uh, you know, that's that's how we did it. And how we actually really got uh, any kind of support was that we would go to the police and the firehouses and the police and the firefighters supported us. And um, those guys, you know, I, they. I don't know if we hit a soft spot with those guys or what, but they, they rallied behind us. And, um, you know, to this day, my, my biggest charity that I give back to is our first responder charities just because of that. Um, but yeah, dude, it was, uh, it was humble. And, and, you know, it took us from, let's see, that was, that was 1999, our first store. We opened our second store in 2006. So our wow. second store took us uh, almost seven years to open. We opened a second store. Um, then we had the opportunity that same year to take over a business that was failing. Uh, there was a, this was in Springfield, Missouri. We're in St. Louis now where I'm at right now. Um, and so I had the opportunity to move back to St. Louis, which is where I was from to take over these failing businesses. Uh, there were six, there were six of those, uh, they were retail stores similar to ours. Um, I closed two of them because they were just dead in the water and then we kept four. So we had six stores. So we went from two stores to six stores uh, in one day. So that was trial by fire, man. Like, you know, I never ran a staff. I didn't have employees. And all of a sudden I had to deal with all that. And I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I got pretty beat up through that for a long time. And honestly, I think it's still the hardest part of running a company. Um, but yeah, man. And then in 2008, we started working on our, you know, this whole time we didn't have any business. So we had a lot of free time. You know, we had a lot, dude, up until uh, eight, nine years in the business, we were still having days where we would have a store that didn't see anybody. So this isn't like we were kicking ass. Like we were, we, we were, we were struggling and we just kept showing up, dude. And uh, in 2008, I had the opportunity to consult on a product with a manufacturer for a big chain store. It was actually for Target. And uh, they, these guys were making a protein powder for Target and they, asked me to consult because I had retail experience and I went in to consult. The product was terrible. 
Uh, this company had already made the investment in the equipment. Target backed out of the deal and they were kind of stuck with no customer. And I convinced them because uh, I didn't have any money. I convinced them to work with me on credit terms. And I told them that one day we'd be their biggest customer. And now we're by far their biggest customer. So, um, you know, a lot of hard work, a lot of grit, a few, few good breaks. Um, but man, you know, like my first three years, I didn't make a dollar. My next seven years, uh, up until year 10, I made $695 a month for a total of $58,000 over the course of my first 10 years running the business. So, uh, I worked other jobs. I bartended, I bounced, uh, Chris worked at a gym and we, we kind of, we, we worked the other jobs for most of those years to keep the store open. And then, you know, we started figuring it out and one thing led to another and, and, um, we realized, you know, how to run a business. We learned trial by fire and then, you know, things started moving. And that's that 11th year. Um, I think our, it took us for us to do a million dollars total in business. Um, we, it took us, I think, almost to the end of our 10th year to do a million dollars as a company the entire year. So that tells you like how long it took. You know, nowadays, these e-com guys are talking about making a million dollars in your first month and all this other BS. And, you know, it is BS. Um, but, you know, I, I, we, we came the hard way, man. It was the hard way. Yeah. And, uh, and it created a real solid foundation for knowledge, a real solid foundation for how to do business. Because ultimately, bro, business comes down to people. And it comes down to taking care of people, providing an excellent experience, delivering on what they expect, plus some more. And uh, we, we had to do that because we didn't have any money to spend on advertisement. And the only way that we could get customers was through word of mouth. So for us to get our business to grow because we didn't have any money, we had to get such, do such a good job that people told other people. And they did. And that's, that's still our secret. Uh, still to this day, you know, here we are. This is 24 years in the business. Um, Supplement Superstores uh, is, is still crushing. And then we have First Form. We have a bunch of other companies now, too. But, you know, to this day, uh, our business model is based off word of mouth. We spend very, very, very little money on offensive marketing um, because we learn how to do it without it. And so that makes our company, you know, that much more profitable, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, but yeah, that's the short story, man. I mean, that's, that's a long story, but uh, there's a lot that goes into that. I could tell you a lot of stories about it, but that's pretty much the gist of it, brother. Yeah, man, I think that's great, man. I love it. You know, we talked about this before, and I love the fact that, you know, in, in this day and age, people want it quick. They they think they're just going to wake up one day and become a multimillionaire. Yeah. I, I, like, as a business owner myself, it is difficult mm -hmm. because dealing with people is pretty difficult, too, because everybody's different. Some people have issues. Sometimes you got to fire people. You got to yeah. hire people, you know, and all of those things are probably the biggest hurdle when dealing with a business. But the the, the get rich quick thing is what I want people to to understand that a lot of that is bull crap, it's baloney, it's guru yeah. stuff. People tell you that you got to have grit. And, and the thing is, it's good to not get rich quick because then you develop these skills. That's right. Because I'm telling you, man, like I didn't know about your history before, you know, we had talked before, but like I saw the finished product and I'm sure you guys are, I saw the new buildings being built. I mean, you guys are just probably just beginning, but the finished product that I saw, having a hundred and some thousand square foot facility. I mean, yeah. bigger than Amazon. Yeah. And well, Amazon's actually right next door. They're right. a hundred and, they're 140,000 square feet and we're, we're 200,000 square feet here. 200, but, <laughs> but I don't have the bank account Bezos has. So it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not yet. Not yeah. yet. But you know, but, but it's not just that too, man. Like the way you run the business as well. When I went into the facility, it's, it's unbelievable. Everything is neat, it's clean, it's specked out. Everything in the business has have a, a, a meaning to it. It's not like y'all throwing paints on the wall and got all this stuff. I mean, it's has meaning. It has history. It has mm -hmm. grit to it. And even in the weight room, y'all got a full facility, at, you know, yeah. a full weight room, like a whole yeah, LA Fitness yeah. type thing. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I mean, and it's specked out. I mean, you go down there, you look at the weights, and the weights are all lined up perfectly like mm -hmm. it's supposed to and mm -hmm. you hold people accountable to that yeah and, one, and one thing about that brother is like you know we don't have uh, a team that goes around and cleans we don't have we don't have janitors we don't have a uh, cleaning crew we have a couple maintenance guys when sh when stuff breaks but like the responsibility so how that happened and this is actually an interesting story i think i think everybody would be it would be valuable for people to hear 
back at our old HQ, brother, we had a, we had a woman that cleaned the office for a while. And I noticed that when we had this woman come in and clean that nobody picked up their own shit. And, <laughs> and it started making me mad. Like, I'm like, well, look, that's not her, her job isn't to pick up your lunch trash. And it, I started getting angry. So I actually fired her um, because I, I wanted everybody to learn. Now I didn't fire her like harshly. Like we get, we, she still does stuff for us in another, another place, but I fired her from cleaning the building. And uh, the reason is, is because I realized that we were becoming undisciplined with, with our abilities to keep the place clean. And so we made a rule right then. And this started at old HQ where we're going to clean the own building. We're going to take care of it. We're going to take care of our, our own facilities ourselves as we go. And uh, people really bought into it because I was able to show them that just like straightening the weights, right? We could all put the weights back and, and it takes two extra seconds to straighten them out and make them look perfect. And every time we do that, or every time we wipe out a sink, so there's no water in it. Like, you know, when you walk in the bathrooms here, they look brand new. They don't look, they don't look clean. They look like nobody's ever used them. And the reason it looks like that is because we've been able to make our employees understand, which is true, that every time that they take care of a small detail, it's not that they're cleaning the building for you, Brandon, or anybody that comes through. They're actually making an investment in their own discipline that, that sharpens their skill set. And that discipline then overflows into other areas of their life and their career. And once people start to understand that all these little things that we handle throughout the course of our day actually uh, add to our discipline bank account, it makes it real easy for people to get people convinced to do it every time. And so one of the things I'm most proud of about the facility, and I appreciate all the good words, but is the fact that we do it ourselves. It's not a cleaning crew like most companies, you know, most companies that have 450 employees under one roof, they've got cleaning crews that come in at night and clean everything. We, we, we don't do that. We do it ourselves. Yeah. And I think that's awesome, man. You know, and, and you're so much of an inspiration to me. I almost flew my team out, just a, just a few people to just see how y'all do it there, because I, I try to replicate that same uh, energy here and have, make sure everybody clean the stuff up. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, you may not have to pick everything up and put it under the desk, but just make it neat on the desk. Mm -hmm. This place should be clean. It should yeah. be spick and span. When people come in here, it should smell good. It should be clean. Because then that's the way people perceive who you are. Absolutely. They're like, you know, you go into somebody's desk, it's junky and it's nasty everywhere and it's trashy. And, and that's, that's how they perceive you do business. Mm -hmm. But if you come in, the stuff is clean, it's neat, everybody's professional. It just makes a, a world of a difference. And I think that that, matches kind of what you said about marketing mm -hmm. you don't have to go make a video and tout about first form hq you don't have to because mm -hmm. everybody that show up there is going to go around and be a mouthpiece I, I don't know how many people i've told about first form just because of how you run the business how the staff is how professional people are the energy in the place I mean, I even try to use the same people that do your carpet and, and uh, uh, cubicles and stuff yeah, because yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm inspired by yeah, Nathan. kind of yeah. what you do, what right. what you do with that. So, Thank but you, I want man. people to learn learn about a few more things about that because they got first form. Now, can you just explain to my audience what first form does? Because I know first form with the supplements, mm -hmm. um, incredible supplements. Like I said, the, the, I haven't tasted the protein shake that's better than first forms, not not even close, and that's healthy because you know you get stuff that tastes good and a bunch of sugar and all all this yeah. bull crap in it but but then you also y'all have a component of coaching to a certain degree right because mm -hmm. yeah. you know you, you don't just take supplements there's a lot more to it yeah we do a lot of different things here actually that that people know us for supplements because that's our core business and that's where we started but i think as we go on through our business journey people will come to know us for for different things i think what they're going to come to know us as as an all encompassing personal development company a company that makes you better uh, our products that we sell, we have three main categories that we do business in. One is our core business of sports nutrition and health. So this could be foundational health supplements, uh, supplements for athletes, like guys like us, uh, moms who just want to get healthy, all the way to people who are you know elderly who just want to maintain their, their uh, micronutrient health and, and all of these things. So we cover the, nu the nutrition aspect top to bottom, A to Z. Um, the other two uh, core components of our company is apparel. So one of the things that we do is we make our own apparel. It's cut and sew. Uh, we make amazing, uh, high quality apparel. It's not, this isn't like we're just selling shirts with our logo on it. If you guys ever get a chance to try our apparel or use it, you'll see it's, it's top quality, just like our supplements. 
And then we have energy drinks. So we have first form energy, which is a, a, the third tentacle of, of our brand. Uh, and that's where you see a lot of our action sports. Uh, it's really, it's a, that's a fun part of the brand because we get to do like a lot of really cool stuff, racing, uh, motocross, uh, adventure, fishing, outdoor stuff that really like doesn't kind of equate to apparel or supplements. So it's fun. It makes it more fun. Um, but all three of those are our main thing. And then we do have uh, coaching inside. We, the, one of our main ways that we do it, and a lot of people think this is MLM, but it's not MLM. Uh, we have one layer of independent reps that we use. So like if someone wanted to become a, an affiliate of First Form, we have a program called the Legionnaire Program, which where people can join uh, and then actually represent our brand out in the real world and make some money doing it. Um, but our main things are, you know, nutrition, apparel, and then energy. And um, all three are going very well. If you want to like, like, the, and I know people that don't know me will laugh when I say this, but give me, give me 20 years, you won't be laughing. Um, right. We are going to become the Nike, the Red Bull, and the Gatorade all combined into one company. That's our, that's, if you wanted to, if I wanted to describe our vision uh, in the shortest amount of time, that's what, what it, what it's going to be. It's going to be an all encompassing total performance company for not just high level athletes, but everybody from, you know, people elderly that want to, you know, just be healthy all the way to the highest level athletes. Um, like Fred Warner, who's the linebacker for the, for the uh, 49ers, the best yeah. linebacker in NFL. So yeah. like who's who's a first form athlete. So like we we work from everybody. So that's yeah, how, that's, that's kind of the brand in a nutshell. Yeah, and it's funny cuz uh you know it makes me think of this Dana White uh clip that he says is like yeah, uh, count me out if you want to. I I, I yeah. thrive on it. Like I, yeah, I, I do you too. know and I hear you I hear you saying yeah. that and and like you yeah. know the, most people that watch me they have common sense but you know there's somebody out there like uh-huh uh-huh I'm like yeah. bro if you know Andy yeah, this ain't 20 years may may be too long. You know, you yeah, it might be 10. You know, you, I, I just give you, myself enough time to, to mess around a little bit, too. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's another thing that you guys do that I think is absolutely tremendous. It's amazing. You know, my wife did it. I don't know if she finished or not, but she she definitely have made an attempt on it. I know I, I can't find a person that's in my network that haven't tried this this uh, particular lifestyle change. Cause mm -hmm. it's not a fad. It's not a, it's not a trend. It's literally a revolutionary thing that could change your life. Can you talk to my audience about 75 hard? It'd be, sure. I bet most people know what I'm talking about already, but yeah. for the ones that don't 75 hard. So 75 hard is the initial component of a bigger program called live hard and live hard is a lifestyle program that I created uh, about five years ago that takes you through the course of a year. Now the goal is, that you want to complete this program every single year of your life. That's that's the goal of the program. 75 hard is the first 75 days of the program. And basically, it's a set of simple tasks that are very, very detailed, uh, but simple that you must complete for 75 days in a row. And basically what it is, it's the boot camp to mental toughness and high levels of discipline. One of the biggest reasons that we fail as humans it's because we lack discipline. When we think about what it is that we want to achieve and what it is we're trying to achieve and what we've not been able to achieve, the reality is it always comes back to our inability to adhere to whatever it is that we set out to do. So our ability, our discipline, and our mental toughness to persevere and adhere to whatever goals we set to is the only thing that keeps us from achieving or not achieving the actual result that we want. And so when we break down any area of our life, when we say, okay, I want to become this, I want to do this, I want to make this much money, I want to have this physique, I want to drive this car, I want to live in this house, I want to live this life. The only thing that ever keeps us from getting there is our lack of discipline. And people seem to think that motivation is somehow the key. Motivation really has nothing to do with it because we're only going to be motivated 10% of the time if you're highly motivated, all right? You have to be able to do the actions, whether you're motivated or not. And that's where discipline and mental toughness come in. And most of us lack it. And the reason that we lack it is because we live in a world of instant gratification. We live in a world where everything, like you said earlier, get rich quick, you know, make a million bucks in a month, lose 60 pounds in, in, in 30 days. Uh, you know, you, <laughs> these things are these things are not true. They're not true. This is marketing BS that is a band-aid for people's uh, ultimate desire. And usually people know 
that these things are BS, but they'll try them anyway because they're desperate. And if they would just take their desperation and instead of trying all of this BS that they know in their heart is BS and build the foundational skill set, okay, of mental toughness, discipline, grit, perseverance, fortitude. These are the things, self-belief, self-confidence. Most do we live in a we live in a, a time in the world where depression is at an all-time high. The lack of confidence is at, all, is at an all-time high. And the reason is, is because we have been spoiled with softness for so long that we have forgotten what it even takes to build confidence. And what it takes to build confidence is saying, I'm going to do that and then doing it. And so the whole program is designed to take anyone, anyone, it doesn't matter who they are, from, a, from where they are, which is usually in a pretty bad place, through the first 75 days, which teaches them, dude, people have incredible, incredible transformations that first 75 days. But the thing is, is that this is a sustainable program over the course of your life because the rest of the program consists of three 30-day phases. So you have phase one, phase two, phase three, which, which takes up less than 50% of your year. But if we think about it like a car, right? Like if we run a high performance car, that car has to be tuned up, all right? If we don't tune it up, if we don't maintain it, if we don't take care of it, it's not gonna continue to run at, at its highest performance. We as people are the same. And discipline, the thing about it is that it's a perishable skill. So if we don't practice discipline day in and day out, we lose it. So the goal of the program, a lot of people will say, oh, 75 hard is not sustainable. Well, that's because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Real talk, okay? <laughs> because the whole program is called Live Hard, and it's designed to be repeated year after year after year. It's less than 50% of our year. And once you start to realize what the results are out of it, most people have no problem going after it because it tunes them up. And so we end up, what ends up happening is we end up living our lives exactly how we want to live our lives, which is at a high level, high fitness level, high income level, high drive level, high, high discipline level. And that allows us to actually control our environment as much as we possibly can. And we both know like the world's crazy right now. Like, dude, you and I, we, we both have big ass shows that we talk about this every day. These, the, the world's crazy and it's chaotic and there's all kinds of stuff going on. So how do we get through it? Well, we get through it by controlling everything that we can control the best to our abilities and let the world burn, bro. At the end of the day, while everybody else stops, and by the way, I don't mean that. I dedicate, for those of you that don't know me, I dedicate as much time as anybody talking about the world's problems. But, um, you know, we have to put that outside of our brain sometimes and handle business. And so if you handle your own business, you end up moving forward while everybody else is staying still or moving backwards. And that ends up giving us a tremendous advantage over the long haul in every single area. It makes us a better business person. It makes us earning higher income. We're more fulfilled. We attract higher quality partners. Okay. We get better quality friends. Our quality of life improves. And most importantly, and this is the big deal about it, man, we feel better about ourselves. We believe in ourselves and we have confidence in who we are, which dude, any time that we've ever felt great about ourselves, like I, you guys should think about it right now. Think about like when you walked into the, the last time you walked into a room and you thought, man, excuse my language, dude, but man, I'm the baddest motherfucker in this room. That's a powerful feeling, dude. And we all deserve to have that. And the way that we have it is by just doing what we can do and knowing that we're doing what we can doing. We don't have to be, you know, the, the fittest or the richest or the best looking, we're never going to be. There's always going to be somebody better. But if we're doing everything that we can do, now we're in a situation where we can feel that we're giving our best product, which gives us high confidence levels, which, bro, that's everything in life, man. You want to feel good. If you feel good about yourself, you're, you're, you're able to do much better things for everybody around you. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. You know, it's funny because before, I didn't really feel like that, you know, because I, I didn't have the confidence. I didn't see the world like that. I ain't had met guys like you and and, you know, but now I realize how important it is, man. Like the way you feel about yourself and the way you project. Right. Because if you if you feel like, you know, you're a crappy person, you're yeah. going to project that on other people. You're going to see the worst in other people. You're going to be insecure the way you respond, the way you connect, the people that are your friends, because you can't have a lot of high value friends, people yeah. that are doing it and killing it. And you sitting around there moping. Because you're going to feel bad. You're going to have friends that are moping, that's complaining all the time and doing all these things. And this is like a subconscious response that people have. They don't understand that if you 
do a program like 75 hard and you get in shape and you look in the mirror and say, man, I look good today. And you, and your confidence, you have confidence in your discipline because you know, you're better than half of the, I probably 90% of the people in America yeah. because you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're seeing incremental gains in your personal life. Therefore you can go after that job. Therefore you can wear the clothes that you want to wear. Therefore dude, you can make as much right money there. as you want. You know that from just being a big dude. I'm a big dude too, bro. I used to be 350 pounds. Okay. Even when I'm lean, I'm 250 pounds. So it's like, I'm like for me, the close things you just said, that's a big deal for me. Like I used to be the guy that would stand in front of the mirror for 30 minutes and try on seven different shirts to go to dinner because I felt like I looked like shit in all of them. And like, th dude, we, 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 we have to stop living like this. This is not how we're meant to live. We're not meant to consume all this bad food. We're not meant to drink all this alcohol. We're not meant to sit in front of the TV for hours on end or sit in front of this device for hours on end scroll dude we are a high performance machine and if we don't treat ourselves like a high performance machine we're going to feel bad about ourselves dude and this is so much more important than people really realize because they say you know well you know i don't need to be jacked and i don't need to be rich and i'm happy this is that bro fine cool go do that but for the rest of us dude we feel like we're floating around in this chaotic world, like a plastic bag just floating in the wind. And that gives us anxiety. It gives us depression. It makes us feel crazy. And like what I found and what I believe is that this program helps restore some order and some focus and some clarity to our road and progress in life. And, you know, dude, I haven't ran one ad for it. I've never, I've never, you know, I talk about it on my buddy's show like we're doing right here. But I mean, it speaks for itself. It's got oh. over a billion mentions on TikTok. Um, you know, and, and dude, it's, I don't even know. Millions of people have done it over the course of the last five years. And uh, yeah, it, I take a lot of, yeah, I take a lot of pride in it, dude. Like I, I live that lifestyle. I really like I, people see me. If you follow me on Instagram, you see me. I do it every day. I've lived this life for five years now. Um, I, you know, it's my program, dude. So like you guys can discount everything I say, but talk to some other people to do it. I think it's oh, yeah. the biggest thing since sliced bread. People, people, people will not be able to follow me and then follow other people that follow me and not run into 75 hard. I, cool. I was just watching a day. There was a guy that I ran into in, in Paradise Valley here. Uh, I think he does like crypto or something. I, I don't know what he does, but he, he was in a, he was in a, um, he was in a, a Rose Royce Cullinan. He should mm -hmm. pull up next to me at the light. And he's like, oh, B, I follow you on social media. And so I followed him back. And what do you know? He's doing 75 hard. I, he, yeah. day, he day five of 75 hard. Yeah. And people don't understand that the values of like making sure you drink enough water, working out, yeah. reading material that's going to make you better. And, and it's not, not reading garbage all day and watching Netflix and watching women tear each other apart on a, on a, on a thing. It's okay. Maybe you want to watch that at some point, but how much more, you know what, Andy, like this is, this is what I'm learning, man, as I'm like growing and becoming more and more successful and meeting a lot of successful people and, and looking at people who are, who have done it, people who got hundreds of millions of dollars that they make. And I'm not saying success is just money, but in, in, in my view of success, maximizing your potential financial growth is, is, is something that people should aspire to do. But when I see more people, it's like, you only have 24 hours in one day. What are you actually doing to make yourself better in 24 hours? And, and to be honest, it ain't about other people. It's yeah. really about you. Like you, you look from you from when you wake up to lunchtime, what have you done to reach your goals? What have you done to become more successful? What have you done about weight loss or what have you done about building relationships? And all of that means something, but the 75 hard gives you a guide to say, mm -hmm. okay, if I do these things, then I, I know for a fact I'm on the path to succeed physically, my health wise, mentally. I, I'm on the path to be a better version of myself. I'm not out getting drunk at parties and doing all that because I don't, you know, I'm not gonna do that. Right. That's a part of, you know, kind of growing myself for the 75 days. And to be honest, if you if you don't make it once, you don't make it twice, you start over at some point, you're gonna get to that point to say, I don't give a what I gotta do. I'm gonna finish this thing. I don't care what nobody say. Nobody's gonna stop me. There's a young girl that I follow too. She had a um, she she her story is that she she ended up getting legislation passed here in the state of Arizona because Kaylee. she was assaulted. I forget her name. Kaylee. Yeah, Kaylee. Yeah. She's on it. Set it hard every day. She yeah. showed transformation uh, photos, and, and, and you could I could see her confidence change. Yeah. Like 
doing 75 hard and she's in, in great shape mentally, physically. And, and now she's she's like, I, I, I can't say enough about it. Her confidence is exuding in, on her social media post. Yeah, I'm going to have her come in on the show here real soon. Yeah. yeah she's she, awesome, man. She's awesome. Yeah. She came to my book signing party. Like I had a book signing launch party here she came she brought her husband and and she just radiates man she she, she told me that she was like overweight she she had the pictures to show it and uh you know I, that's one thing i like about you andy is that you don't just be talking because a lot of people they can find a way and they have the gift of gab they just say whatever make people feel good they they try to do the raw raw stuff but like if they, somebody go follow you on social media they see the pictures of you over 300 pounds yeah they see them pictures and, and, and see you now. Like, you ain't just talking, bro. Yeah, no, nah, man. I lived it, dude. That's, I, I, you know, I think one of the best things that ever happened to me, bro, is that I was born, I, and this is legitimate scientific proof, because I actually just had my blood work done, and I have a number of the genes that they call the fat genes, and I've actually turned them off because of my lifestyle. So they're actually uh, dormant genes now. And so- you can you can legitimately change your whole life. But the point is, I live most of my life, bro, like very insecure and struggling with being overweight. It was a huge problem for me. And uh, while I was able to like it, I'm actually a perfect example of the person that you just mentioned. I used to be the guy that, you know, I was mildly successful, uh, even being out of shape in our nutrition business. Um because I was, I got good at selling and I got good at talking and helping people. And, uh, but my life changed, man. And, uh, you know, I, I, I looked in the mirror in 2016, dude, and, uh, I was 350 pounds and I actually made it. I was so ashamed of how I looked, uh, because I was embarrassed because our company first form, uh, had started to really grow and people were like social media. My social media was starting to take off for my motivational content and my business content. And um, I was so embarrassed, dude, because like I was I, I saw this video. Uh, it was, I was at a speaking engagement and I was, I was you know, getting paid to speak at that time. And, bro, I was so fat, like so, so fat. And I'm up here talking about like getting your shit together and working hard and all this stuff. And I watched the video and I heard my words and then I saw what I looked like. Mm -hmm. And, dude, mm -hmm. it changed me in like it, Tyler, my buddy Tyler was was doing our video, my personal video. He, uh, he's a creative director here at First Form, he, and we were sitting, we're watching the video, and I'm like, "Bro, is that what I really fucking look like?" And dude, this this guy don't have a filter. He's like, "Yeah, man," and I'm, dude, but I'm glad he said it like that because it, it, in that one minute, I was like, "I'm done." And yeah. that first year, I lost 110 pounds. I went from 350 to 240, and then uh, then I went. I intentionally moved my weight back up to about 275 because I lost a lot of muscle during that time of just losing all the fat. And now I'm floating, you know, now I float around two, 250, 260, somewhere in that range. But I mean, dude, I've never gone back. And up until that point, I had lost weight and gained weight and lost yeah. weight and gained weight and lost weight and gained weight. And so like all the stuff that we deal with as insecure, big, you know, overweight uh, or, you know, maybe you're underweight, all that stuff. I know what that's like, dude. I know what it's like to pass on invitations uh, to go to a pool party or barbecue because I, I don't look good. I don't feel good. I know what it's like to, to feel like a fraud because I wasn't living what I was saying. I know what it's like to not like to go shopping because I can't find anything that fits. Uh, I, I know what it's, I know all these things are like, dude, I know what it's like to wear the same outfit literally every day for years and years and years to the point where they fall off of you because it's the only outfit that you feel like doesn't make you look like a freaking blimp. You know, dude, when I, when I met my wife, um, Emily, you know, I was big, dude. I was probably three. I was, at that time I was probably about three thirty, and, uh, I used to wear these shorts and, and dude, I wore these shorts every day for like five <laughs> years straight, bro. Every day. And she, and like, dude, finally she like threw them out because you could like, see through them like, <laughs> dude look i must be a funny ass dude because i don't know what she saw in me dude i'm gonna be real with that like like or she's or she's a chubby chaser one of those things. Yeah. i don't know what it is but anyhow uh no but i think that's i think it, you know i think that's funny because you know women not women but not all women but like some people in our society today they, they're such cowards that they would feel like oh you're fat shaming and like brother 
I ain't hearing it's that. It's nothing wrong with looking in the mirror because I do it now. Like, bro, yeah. I used to be, I used to be two twenty, and I used to ride my bike, and then I got down to like two fourteen, which is the lowest I've I've ever been since I since I left college. And man, I used to ride two hundred and fifty miles a week, man. Yeah. And I I love riding my bike. That was my that was my release. I did Mount Lemon. I I, re, I went tour to California. We did some stages of that, and 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 that was my love, man. And I got married and got happy and got busy and I quit paying attention to it, man. I gained a lot of weight, man. I'm I'm 270 and I'm only like 220. Yeah. And so, but brother, I, I feel the same way. Like I look in the mirror and I'm like, bro, people people can't tell because I got my clothes on. But when I go yeah. in the mirror and I take my shirt off and I'm like, I tell my wife this all the time. And she's just like, well, go work out then. I'm yeah. just like, man, I'm disgusted yeah. by the way I look. But, yeah, but this is the way, this is the way I think about it too. I said, you know what? I believe God is waiting for me to do certain things in order to give me certain levels of success, bro. Because I, I can say this, and if I don't feel confident enough, that confidence will, that lack of confidence will carry with me in business meetings and, and events right. and getting a ta tailored suit and all that other stuff that normally I would do with confidence, I don't have the confidence to do. And in my mind, and this is what I'll tell the people in the audience, if you're in this situation, get it together because your confidence means a lot. And maybe there's somewhere that God is trying to take you, but he needs you to get it together because you want to be on stage. You want to be featured in Forbes magazine or something like that or whatever. And you don't want to do it and you're not at your best. And, yeah. and I'm not saying slow down with working, but don't be afraid to look in the mirror and say, I don't like the way I look or I don't like the way I sound. I don't like how I'm treating people. I don't like the way I'm leading my business. It's okay to look in the mirror and say, Enough is enough. Yeah. I need to improve. I should be the best version of myself. All this cry baby, well, you shouldn't fat shame and you, you, everybody's different. It's like, no, you know, when you look in the mirror, how you feel. Bro, Quit lying to people, different. Here's you know? what's different. I work my ass off and you eat cupcakes. That's how we're right. different, right? Right, right? The truth is the paramount to progress. We like, it's the foundation of progress. The truth is the absolute beginning foundational building block to actually having what you want. And so we have, as painful as that is, man, as, as much as it sucks, we cannot continue to justify our lack of action and lack of follow through with stories that just aren't true. Yeah, man, everybody is different, but you are, if you're not living at the highest state or at least pursuing the highest state of yourself, in my opinion, dude, you're disrespecting yourself. You're disrespecting the people around you. Okay. Think about all the people around you that look to you to be the example. And like, if you're not set, like, dude, this took me a long time to really understand because I, I was, you know, dude, I was a guy like, I, I like to party. I like to, you know, go around and do all the stuff that like you probably shouldn't do and like live a, a more wild life. And I started realizing, dude, I'm not setting the right example. I'm not, this, this is not what I want. This, this is the, I, what I'm living here is uh, listen to what I say, but don't watch what I do. And that's not an authentic way to live. And I think, you know, at, at, when I matured up a little bit, I started to realize that this just wasn't about me. Right. It was about everybody that looks at me and says, okay, well, I want to live a better life, but look how he's living. And it like, it, so that's the thing. And then also, I think we are disrespecting God. I think we do disrespect God when we don't actually try to fulfill our own true potential because dude, I don't have a son or a daughter, but if I did, I would want them to go pursue to be the best possible version of themselves. And that's what I would be most proud of them for. So when I think about that and I think about our relationship with God, I truly feel like that when I'm not living at my highest standard, I'm disappointing him. That's, that's right. how I feel. And, 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 uh, you know, I know there's probably a lot of people watching, like, how can you be a believer in God and use the language you use? Well, you know, I'm not perfect. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Right. Yeah, yeah. The same people are talking about your language. They doing something. They doing yeah. something. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. You know. I, look, man, I, I don't, I don't look at people who are overweight and think like poorly about them. Like a lot of people think, you know, like, oh, they're just lazy POSs. That's not, that's not what it is, dude, because I'd be calling myself a lazy POS. In fact, I'm still a lazy POS. I just force myself to do the things so that it produces the result. Like, dude, I'm still on the inside that lazy fat dude that was 350 pounds. 
The reason I work so hard and the reason I go so hard is because I'm terrified of becoming that again after working so hard to get past that. And so, you know, it's not all I'm trying to do here is live an example of, of what it looks like to be a normal human and do extraordinary things. And, and you know, I, I think the foundational building block for all of that is telling ourselves the truth not getting wrapped up in this politi politically correct BS, social movement BS. We all know that's BS, bro. You could sit here and say, oh, fat people are beautiful. And you could say all this stuff. And that might, might, maybe you're into that. That's fine. The truth of the matter is, it's not healthy. At the very least, it's not healthy. And that's scientifically proven. And we all, bro, you and I know what this is about. This is about cultural demoralization to get people to accept lower standard. And that's another thing. Both of our shows are typically about what's going on in the world. And we are all frustrated about what's going on in the world. Well, how do we solve it? How do we solve what's going on in the world? We solve it through taking responsibility for ourselves and removing ourselves from their matrix, which is they want you fat. So you have to become fit. They want you broke. So you have to become financially uh, well off, at least at, at some positive level uh, responsibility for what we put in our brain. You know, like, dude, we're inundated with BS all day on our phones, uh, in the media. So, dude, we should take the time to put actual knowledge in our brains, who we associate with. Like all of these things, what it does and what people don't realize and what they, what they fail to realize is that when we, when, we, when we live the values of personal excellence, we actually remove ourselves from the system because they feed us the food, right? We eat their food. Then, we, then they feed us their drugs when we get sick from their food, all right? Then they want us to consume all their streaming content, their media, and their Hollywood stuff. So how do we remove ourselves as customers of that? Well, then we, we, put, we, we pick up a book. Remember books? They look like this. They got pages in them. You know, they're written by people who lived life already, you know? So, like, we, we put good information in our brain instead of consuming their stuff. And dude, what happens is we're, we're, we're basically removing ourselves as customers from their system. And then we, you know, when we make money, we become uh, conscious about where we spend our money. We spend our money with pro-American, pro-freedom brands that care about the regular people that are run by regular people. They aren't run by global corporations that have all these political motives to keep, you know, us, the peasants, you know. And I know that probably sounds weird because I'm a wealthy dude saying us, the peasants. But guess what? I'm us. You're us. We're all on the same team, dude. They are on a different team that we're not on. And so like we have to support each other and work with each other to build each other up. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I think that when we think about like what's going on in the world, the, the true foundational solution that we need to have, you know, a lot of people want to rally around violence. Oh, we need a revolution, dude. Okay. We had a revolution, Brandon. What about tomorrow? Right. What about the next day? What about the next five? We've got some bad habits as a country. You know, we're lazy. We're overweight. We're sick. We're not living up to our high standards. We're not. And this is why and what creates their ability to do what they do to us. And, and, and so, like, dude, if we don't take responsibility for ourselves, there's no hope for America anymore. Right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Love that, Andy, man. You know, we you, I, me and you could go for five hours. Oh, I, well. I would love to talk to you for five hours, but. Um, man, I, I, I appreciate you coming on. I know you have a lot of stuff going on, man. You're a busy dude. I mean, I watch you on social media all the time, man. And and I love everything you say, man. You go hard in the paint because you care and you live in it. And I'm telling you, Andy, from from me to you, man, that's you inspire me. Bro, everything I do, everything I do at this business, I'll be, I be telling them. I, I huh? appreciate you so much and what you do and the message that you put out. And how, how you're trying to help the world, bro. It's it's a hundred percent mutual respect. And if there's anything that I can ever do to, to serve you guys, uh, you got my number, bro. For sure. Yeah. So sure. we'll do it, man. I gotta I gotta find out. I saw the, the little garage thing. I gotta find out how that garage is going. <laughs> you know, so. Next time you're well, out, I, we'll, we'll do some car stuff. Next time you're out. Yeah. I, I'm Let's actually it, starting a a car YouTube uh, segment on my YouTube. Oh yeah. Uh, so next time you come out, dude, we'll plan it and we'll do it. We'll do a segment together. It'd be fun. It'd be great. And, and Andy, before you leave, tell everybody where to follow, where to follow you at, how they can follow first form and, and all of the things that you guys are doing. We didn't even get into what you, what you do with Ed Milet. 
Um, I think that conference is coming up soon. But uh, yeah. can you tell us where they can find you and get all the information. The main, the main, where I'm most active personally uh, is my Instagram. And my, you're going to go to my Instagram. And you're going to see that I haven't posted in three years. I don't post in the static feed anymore. I just do stories. Uh, but I'm working on transitioning my main platform over to YouTube. So uh, it's just Andy Frisella on Instagram. And I think it's Andy Frisella on YouTube too, isn't it? Isn't that what it is? Okay. Andy Frisella on YouTube. And um, I've got a podcast. It's uh, it's Real AF. It's on all major platforms. You can listen to that. That's that's my main platform. My main platform is the podcast. Um, but yeah, man, that's pretty much it. And I kind of just disperse my information and content out of those three channels. And we'll put all the links in, in the description section for everybody uh, so they can go follow Andy. Man, man, thank you so much. You're an inspiration to me and, and I'm everybody to hear your voice. So I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Likewise. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I put out three videos a day. So make sure you go to the uh, playlist that says new video and watch more videos. Subscribe to this channel. Let's go, baby.